Hello everybody, my name is Junaid Qureshi and I make videos about tech and creativity and also about cameras and equipment. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. And if any of these things excites you, consider subscribing. As I have told you in the last video that there are going to be multiple or more than multiple videos about this uh, basic camera know-how series, you can say that. Uh, so the first video we made uh, was totally about these buttons on your camera. And in the next video, I said that I'm going to make uh, the video about whole menu system. And then we are going to take a picture and record a video using this auto setting. I'm not sure if we are going to do it in this video because uh, this menu system is quite very long. So uh, maybe we will keep it to this uh, menu system in this video. And in next video, we are going to make um, a video about taking a picture and recording a video with auto settings. And there I will tell you um, that how important it is for you to uh, move from or to jump from auto to manual or maybe taking all the steps in between auto to manual uh, with this shutter priority, aperture priority. So I'm going to change the camera and I'm going to attach this 16 to 35 uh, Sony lens with my camera. So uh, most of the functions are going to work. Otherwise, maybe some functions will uh, keep disabled uh, until I uh, attach the lens with the camera. So without wasting any time, let's jump into the camera. All right, so here we are. Let's turn on the camera. And let's go direct into the menu system. So after opening menu system, we are straight into menu system. So this menu system is uh, having like six pages and each page have uh, different sections as well. So the first page is uh, about shooting. And the second one is exposure and color. Third page is focus. Fourth page is playback, uh, then fifth is network, and sixth is setup. We are going to start with shooting. So when you are in photography, you can see here, it's a bit blurry, that we are in uh, photo mode. So when you are in photo mode, these options uh, are a bit different um, when you are in video mode. So let's start with the photo mode first. So the first thing you will see is image quality you can change from jpeg to heif then image quality what you want then um, aspect ratio there are like five aspect ratio you can choose from then video file format it is still here uh, but when you are going to shift to video mode then these five options will also turn into video options so then a uh, file format you see it's telling me that we are not in video mode movie mode or video mode whatever you say so, but it's going to show us different options of recording your video. And then we have this movie setting. Again, it's telling us then the frame rate or recording setting, which is bit rate. So this is the highest bit rate um, I have set in my camera. And then uh, we can shift to APS-C mode. APS-C mode is the one in which you can turn your full frame camera into APS-C. And when your camera will turn into APS-C, the focal length of your lens is going to be multiplied by 1.5. For your quick mathematics, uh, let's say 16 mm is going to be 24 mm. So uh, this is that option. And then long exposure NR, I never used it. Then color space and then lens compensation. Uh, lens compensation is self-explanatory. I mean, every lens has some distortion. Uh, so these distortions can be treated by these settings. So as I told you in the shooting mode, things are different when we are in still mode. Let's switch to video mode. Now we are in video mode and let's see. Now you can see an image quality take you straight to the video settings. Now it's not going to give you that uh, message because we are already in video settings. These are video settings. These are movie settings, different frame rates. SNQ, slow and quick means if you want to record slow motion or take time lapses, you can use that from here as well. Then proxy setting, these proxy settings are very important for videographers when your computer is very slow and it can't handle four to 10 bit videos, then you make proxies. I used to do that, but not anymore. Then everything is same. Number two is media, of course, we need to treat our media. You can format your SD card. As I have told you in previous video that there are two SD card in this camera, slot one, slot two. You can choose any slot and format it. Then record media setting means in which slot you want to record what. I mean, I have set my camera to slot two to take pictures and slot one to record videos. And you can like switch automatically or you can uh, 
do the same thing simultaneously. It's totally up to you. You have so many options in it. Then uh, recover image database. If you lost some images, you can try this option. I never tried it. And then uh, display media info. I mean, when you play, uh, press this play button, which slot media you want to see on your LCD. And then there is a file menu. And now in file menu, you have these files and folders option, file numbers. You want these numbers to be in series. Whenever you format your camera, it's going to start from the last number. It's not going to start reset and going to start from zero. So this is a very good option. Then uh, if your file number is not resetting, you can force it. Set file name, you can give the preset first three alphabet as per your need. I have given an alpha because I have two cameras. Then you can uh, have a different folder name or things like that. Then the next option is select record folder. I mean, in which folder you want to record your media. We have only one folder, so it's already selected. But underneath there is a option where you can create new folder. So when you are going to create this folder by going on this option, you can choose that folder. Then IPTC information, I have no clue what it is. Then copyright information, you can set your copyright information in this camera. So whenever you take pictures and you record video, this information is going to travel with your uh, picture or video. And then uh, set photographer, then copyright, you can set all these information, then you can have this copyright holder name, things like that. You can show these information if you want to. Then we are on the fourth option, that's shooting mode. As I told you before that this camera has three preset options which you can set as per your needs. So you can set these presets in photography separately and in videography separately. So this is for the photography. You can recall camera setting if you have some. I haven't set any memory setting for photography. You can uh, camera set memory. You can, I mean, see that one, two, three, nothing is changing because I haven't set anything. Then you press menu and then you uh, go to memory uh, recall media, then uh, register custom shoot setting in hold one, two, three, things like that. Then we have USB streaming. In USB streaming, you can set that whenever you are going to connect your camera with your laptop, so uh, what frame rate, what resolution it's going to adapt because you can use this camera as a webcam for net meetings. So these are those settings, movie recording. And I mean, if you are talking to somebody on the same time, do you want your camera to record that video as well of yours? So this is that setting. Then drive mode, drive mode is shooting different way of taking pictures. Usually we press the shutter button and take single picture. But when you are doing some fast photography or some street photography, then sometimes you choose this continuous shooting. And then uh, there is high, low, medium. I mean, how fast you want shutter to take pictures. And then it's like, self timer mode two seconds then self timer mode for number of pictures in this you are taking uh, three pictures in 10 seconds a gap and then there's a bracketing it's a full topic what is bracketing and when you use it then you have this bracket setting it's the same thing for bracketing and then interval shoot function interval shoot function is you can say it's sort of a time lapse it's going to take picture with the uh, gap of how many seconds you have set like with this setting it's going to take 500 pictures and it will keep two second gap in between pictures we go back then on number seven we have shutter and silent silent mode setting i mean whenever you take picture your shutter doesn't uh, make some sound because it is for like uh, close environments or very i mean places where people are like talking and you are doing some interviews things like that you can turn off your shutter sound it's very good then uh, shutter type mechanical or uh, electronic. Then E front curtain shutter. It's a curtain which comes in front of your sensor when you turn off your camera. So it prevents your sensor from getting any dust on it. Then a release without lens. If it's on and you don't have lens on your camera and you are going to press shutter button, it's going to take a picture. But there will be no picture, but it's going to make a sound. Then release without card. You don't have SD card in your camera and you are clicking picture, it's still taking picture. So it's very confusing sometimes if you don't have card and you are taking picture, then all of a sudden you open it and you see there is no card, but your camera is telling you that you are taking picture. So I never enabled this function. Then anti-flicker setting, 
And then on number eight, we are image stabilization. There is five axis stabilization in this camera. This is a very useful function when you are taking picture in low shutter speed, then there are micro jitters in your hand. So those jitter doesn't uh, transfer to your picture. So it deals those micro jitters with this option. Then it's a zoom option. You can zoom in your prime lenses. So it's a very good option. Then shooting display, I mean grid line, you know, there are grid line on uh, the screen so you can balance your shot. There are three options, rule of third square and diagonal and square grid. Then live view display setting, I mean, whatever you are changing, it's going to show you on the spot on your LCD. So here we are done with the first page of shooting. Now let's go to the second page and, and that's exposure and color. So first thing is exposure. Exposure is all about ISO. It's giving us option to change ISO from here. Nobody do it because we, we have all the shortcuts to do it. Then you can limit your ISO range. Uh, so maybe you, if you don't want to go beyond like uh, 1250 ISO, you can limit your camera. So no matter how much you rotate your uh, dial, it's not going to cross this 1250 limit. And then exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is that you are telling your camera that every single time when you take picture, you just set it to plus point three um, uh, exposure values. So whatever you are seeing on your screen, your picture will be, uh, I mean, three points brighter than the one you are seeing. Then metering mode, multimetering is a thing. There is a sensor in front of your camera which takes light and uh, it works when you are in auto mode. So with this metering mode, your camera decides that how much light you need. And on the basis of that information, your camera decides that what should be the ISO um, shutter speed or aperture value. So this is for that. Then phrase priority in multimetering. Phrase priority means whenever you are going to focus, it's going to prioritize phase first. Then spot metering. This is also a metering option. It's a very lengthy topic uh, metering. I'm going to discuss it later on when we will jump into videography because I use this option for S-Log3. Then we go to flash. There are different flash options. There is no built-in flash in this camera. You have to attach your flash separately on this hot shoe. So these are for that. I never use flash. Then color and tone. D-range optimizer. Then creative look. There are certain creative looks you can set in your camera. So you get those looks when you shoot your picture so you don't have to edit your pictures in some software then picture profile these picture profile are for videos then soft skin effect uh, i don't know it's going to work maybe when you are going to select some creative look i never shoot in any creative look i always shoot in standard then zebra display zebra display is very useful in zebra display whenever your uh, highlights are clipped and too much bright you will see zebra lines on that means that you are losing information in that part of your picture so having this on you can see that if you are clipping any highlights you can maybe um, decrease your iso or maybe faster your shutter speed things like that it's a very helpful feature. Then autofocus and manual focus, self-explanatory, I mean, focus mode, manual focus, I mean, then balance, then auto tracking. Whenever you track any subject, how fast it follows that, I mean, then AF illuminator, then aperture drive in, autofocus, autofocus with shutter means when you press half shutter, it focus your subject before taking any picture. Then focus area. I mean, how much area you want to focus? I mean, there are so many options. So when you are in zone, you can see this is your zone option. So uh, these are different sizes of your focus point. So then mm, you have a focus area limit. You, you want all these options to be available on your camera or you want to disable few options. This is for that. Then switching VH, AF area, I have no idea. Then focus area color. Like I show you, this is your focus area. So the color is white right now. You can choose between white and red. Then autofocus area registration. I mean, you already register your area. I turned off. Then delete register autofocus area. Then autofocus area auto clear is going to clear it. We are still in focus area. Then area display during tracking and autofocus continuous area display. Then face detection, face and eye autofocus. You always focus to the eye of a subject when you are taking any portrait. It's on when animal or 
human is in the picture whose face or eye you want to focus we have selected human but if you are uh, photographing only animal or bird you can change it here then subject select setting i mean you want these two options in your camera or not you can turn it off or turn it on then right and left eye which eye you want to focus first it's auto whichever is in the front it's going to focus it then face eye uh, frame display i mean whenever the face is in focus or tracking then it's going to put a rectangle on the face so you know their fa face is in focus then your face memory means you can register faces as well auto magnifier and manual focus when you do manual focus the subject is too far sometime so it's going to magnify it I mean, it's going to make it bigger so you can clearly see where you are focusing it. Then this is about the time, how long that uh, focus magnifier should stay and then how much magnifying, then autofocus in magnifying. This is the thing. Then peaking display. Peaking is whenever you are going to focus something, it's going to put borderline on the focused area. Peaking is on, peaking level is high and the color is red. If you choose red, it's going to put a red outline all around that subject. If you put yellow, it's going to put yellow. Usually it's red always. Okay, third page is done. Now we are heading to the fourth page and it's all about play. Play means whenever you are playing media in your camera. Okay, this is it. This is done. Now we are on the fifth page. The fifth page is all about connectivity. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and things like that, how to connect your camera with your smartphone app, how to transfer your media wirelessly uh, to your smartphone, things like that. So connect smartphone, PC remote function, you connect it with your computer. So what function it should do? So this is for that, then select on cam and send. This is what kind of sizes you want of the picture when you send it to your uh, smartphone or tablet. Then uh, reset transfer status, then connection uh, while power off. I mean, nobody connects when it's power off because then in that case, it's definitely uh, using some power. Then remote shooting setting. I mean, you have connected your camera with uh, some wired or maybe wirelessly. So these are for those. Then FTP transfer, then Wi-Fi settings. You can connect your camera with your Wi-Fi network or you can make it Wi-Fi to connect your smartphone with it. These are for those settings. Then Bluetooth self-explanatory, wired LAN, USB LAN tethering. Tethering is, maybe you have seen it, the professional uh, photographers, when they do some uh, portrait session, they connect their camera with their uh, laptops and they press shutter button from the laptop. And when they take a picture, right on the same moment, the picture transfers to their computer. Okay, then network, airplane mode, added name, things like that. This is for network. Now, the last option is setup. This is all about setting up your camera. So forcing area and date, I mean, language, things like that. Reset or save settings. You can, whatever changes you have done with your camera, you can save these settings. Maybe if you want to reset your camera, you can later on load those, those settings. You don't have to again and again do the same settings. Then operation customize. This is the place from where you change function of all these buttons. You can assign these customizable button to different options of your choice. I, let me just show you a little bit how it works. It gives you all the layout that which button uh, this is talking about. When you go in the rear one, now when you select the number one, it's going to show you the number one, that which button you're talking about. So when you press it, it's going to open all the options. So you can select any option which you want to assign on this button. So these are the buttons. Then you go back, then it's telling you this portion. Then it's giving you option for top two buttons. Then your lens button, then your these AVTV dials. Then you can have different settings for photos, different settings for movies. But if you want same setting, then you can always choose this follow custom. Then a custom key setting. Custom key setting means, I mean, these are one, two, three buttons. You, you can have setting for these. Then function menu. Function menu is very good. I, like I told you before, this is a function button. You have this menu right in front of you. You place those options which you use most frequently uh, in function. You have like 12 options to place on function. 
So these are those options. You can quickly access them without thinking anything. You can press this function button. So this option is for that. So again, you can have different function menu uh, in photography and different in videography. Okay, then different set for still and movie. This is a very good option. What it do, whenever this option is on, so when you are taking pictures and you are changing these ISO aperture or shutter speed, and uh, all of a sudden you shift your camera from still to movie mode, then those ISO aperture or shutter speed settings are not going to transfer to the movie mode. So movie mode will have those uh, settings which you used last time. This is a very good thing. So display screen setting, I mean, you have seen that uh, when we press this uh, display option on your screen, it rotates different way of showing you different functions. So you set it as per your need. So this is for that. It's giving you option that these are the available options, which one you want on your screen while you rotate between these view options. So I have selected every other option because all of these are very useful. The same is for Finder. You see all these options when you uh, look through the Finder. Then record with shutter button. I uh, know I never used it. I always record from record button. And dial customization. This is for these two dial customization. They have given it a separate place. Then AVTV rotate normal. I, as I told you in my previous video, if you haven't seen my video, just go ahead and see that video. Uh, I told you that uh, from the front one, you can change your aperture. From the back one, you can change your uh, shutter speed or you can rotate it. I mean, shutter front, aperture back. So this is for that. Then touch operation. Okay, this is a touch screen and I want it to be touch screen. Then finder and monitor. So uh, this is for uh, how you want to switch from monitor to uh, finder. I have set it manual and then uh, monitor brightness. Uh, this brightness I set it to sunny weather. Then viewfinder brightness, it's auto, finder color temperature, display quality is high, finder frame rate. It's a very sharp finder. And then you have a TC UV counter. These are like, I guess uh, you attach some, I don't know, for videography something just to set some markers while shooting video, things like that. Then gamma display, this is for purely for uh, video shooting. When you shoot in log, then these things are useful for you. Then power setting option, self-explanatory. And then uh, sound option, then USB, as I told you, what you want USB uh, to be, I mean, USB streaming, this is for net meeting or things like that. There are so many options. Then external output, you can attach external display with it. So this is for that. And then uh, setup option. This is video light, I mean, power link, things like that while you're recording and then version, then display serial number. So this is it. So these are the main six pages. And on top of it, they have assigned you my menu option. This is a very good option. You actually save all those options which you use frequently and you don't want to dive down deep into the menu to access that option. So you place that option on your favorite ones in my menu. You can still have so many pages of my menu. In short, you can have all menu system in my menu and you can rearrange every function as per your need. So this is for that. So this is all the menu system in Sony Alpha 7.4. So this was all about the menu system of Sony Alpha 7.4. It wasn't meant to be specific about Sony Alpha 4, but the thing is menu system is for every camera and it's different. Mostly menu system on Sony cameras is same, I guess, but things changed when they released this hybrid camera because with this hybrid camera, they put video and uh, photography separate so we can have different menus for both of them. I can't tell you in so much detail about every single uh, menu, but uh, I think you uh, just got the idea of what you are going to deal with when you dive into the menu system. So tell me in comments that uh, if you have learned something in this video or not, and uh, if you are interested to know uh, anything about any specific menu item, I will make another video. So uh, this is it for today. If you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Till then, peace.